Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. On this video, I'm going to go over some of the basics of debugging and troubleshooting. So to start here, I've set start passage as the passage to as a starting point here. I'm going to play it. And you see we have a link to another passage, and I click on it. And then we have two different uh, texts here. The value of some var is 5, and the value of another var is 0. Well, okay, what does that mean exactly? So if I pull up the contents of start passage, I see I'm setting some var to the value of 5, and then we have a link to another passage. In another passage, however, we see the value of some var is some var, which was just set in the previous passage, but then we also see the value of another var is another var, is the value of the variable another var, but we didn't set a value for another var at any point in these two passages from the starting point to from the starting passage to another passage we didn't set a value for another var now if we change another passage to become the starting point and then play it we see that some var is now zero and another var is now zero so this is something to keep in mind in twine 2.0 if you don't initialize a value of some variable for example, in our another var here we've been using, it is automatically set to zero. This is to protect you from referencing some variable, but it not already having a value. So it's something to keep in mind here. That if you don't initialize some variable, it will have the value of zero. Now to see this in practice, I'm going to switch starting passage to the starting point to a start passage. Then we're going to use this little bug icon right here, test story starting from here. Now we, when we enable the debug view, as I'm now doing, it shows all of the background macros and functions that are going on in Twine 2.0. So in our start passage, the first thing that occurred was a set statement, as we see right up here at the top. The second thing that occurred is actually a link go to. Internally, when you use the two brackets to create a link to another passage, Twine 2.0 is actually invoking the link go to macro for the result of clicking on the link and then going to some other passage. And as you can see here, it lists both another passage, the text, and the actual place it's going to, another passage. And then when I have the mouse over it, you can see in the smaller text here, the actual invocation of it. Link go to, with the text another passage, to the passage, another passage. So when I click on it, it shows you what's going on in another passage. And we see the value of some var is 5, and then we see we actually are asking for the value of that variable, some var. Then we see the value of another var is 0 as it shows the value of another var. So the debug view, we could turn it on and off here, shows you exactly how Twine 2.0 is invoking different things and what values are showing up. So coming back to our grid here of passages, I want to show you another thing that can happen. You'll notice that another start passage here is actually in red when it doesn't have the focus. Now the reason it's in red is because within it, as you can see, I have a link to an unknown passage. Literally. I have a link to a passage called a link to an unknown passage that doesn't exist. When you create something like this, a problem like this, Twine 2.0 will change the color. So instead of being sort of a transparent to the background blue, we now see a red hue over it to let us know there's a problem here and we need to make sure that when we run it, for example, if I change the starting point to another start passage, we don't end up with an error. In this case, you'll see I can't even click on it because Twine, Twine 2.0 interpreted that there was supposed to be the passage a link to an unknown passage, but it doesn't exist. And so when you run it, it prevents you, as you can see from me trying to click on it, 
from going to something that doesn't exist and potentially breaking the flow of the program here. Now, that's with an explicit link. What if we had an implicit one? For example, if we were using display somehow, in this case, setting the variable new destination to the string unknown, and then asking the display macro to then display the passage unknown. What happens then? Because as you notice, 22.0 doesn't highlight this as a problem. And the reason is, is that the code will be interpreted at runtime. You know, when it runs, it will go through each code step by step. At this point, however, it hasn't done that yet. So it doesn't know there's a problem. But if we change this to the starting point and then attempt to play it, well, we'll see there's an error here. And it helpfully tells us that it can't display the passage unknown because it doesn't exist. Now, other than variables not existing and uh, links to passages maybe not existing yet, sort of a third category of possible errors you may run into in Twine 2.0 is when you ask Twine to give you some value of some object, in this case a data map, that doesn't exist. So what happens then? So I'm going to change the starting point of this story to be create person object and then play it. In this case, it helpfully tells us that wit data key in the data map doesn't exist. You can't find it. Then we'll see when we pull it up here that the variable person data map is set to the data map health 5 strength 7. Well, wit doesn't appear anywhere in there, so the key doesn't exist in this data map. I mean, as it told us when we ran it, and it produced that error. So if we wanted to double check this, we run it in debug mode, and we see again there's a set, and then it produces the error, because it doesn't understand where the wet data key is. And we can do the same thing with display unknown test the story from that point, and it produces the same error. Again, showing us the set as occurring first, and then the error occurring second. And the same with another starting passage. That it would have been invoking the link go to, but the passage doesn't exist. And so when it ran, it doesn't let us click on it. So those are, in a way, the two different ways to approach debugging and troubleshooting in Twine 2.0. One way is to do what I showed you and practice here. You can change the starting passage using the little rocket icon to different passages to show what would happen if you begin at that point in the story. And then a second way is to use the debugging functionality, the little bug icon. By selecting some part of the story, some passage here, you can click on the bug icon to debug it and, sh and let you show, starting from that point, what it would look like. Now, if you don't want to use sort of the menu that pops up when you mouse over something, you can also click a passage and use the testing functionality from the bottom menu. You can play this story in test mode or play this story from the starting point. And again, if you don't have an explicit link between passages, Twine 2.0 will directly let you know by coloring the passage to a sort of red hue to let you know that it's detected there's a problem here. And then again, as a last thing, if you don't initialize some variable, Twine 2.0 will do it for you and set it to zero. This can be helpful in some cases, but it also can be very dangerous. So keep in mind, if you're going to be testing different things, that if you're going to be looking for the value of some variable, that it's already initialized to some value, that it has some value set in some place that is along the chain of passages that you're then testing each time. Thanks for watching.